Hello and welcome back. This is the second video on dot product and we're going to jump straight into it. So first off, I would like to introduce you to another form of the dot product. Let's read this together. It says that if you have a dot b, where you have the column vector of a dot with the column vector of b, what you then do is you take the product of the i elements, the j elements, the k elements, and you sum them together. We have two different forms of the dot product. Uh, from here on, I'm just going to call this one the geometrical definition of the dot product. And this one that we're learning today is called the column vector definition of the dot product. So you can see that if it has different forms, we can choose to use different forms in different situations, which makes it a really versatile tool. The next thing I want to talk about today is that you can use the dot product to find the angle between two vectors. And you can actually work this out from the geometrical definition of the dot product. From here, I'm going to attempt to make cosine theta the subject of the formula, which means I'm going to divide both sides by mod a mod b. This is what happens. And then I'm going to do cosine inverse on both sides, and that makes theta the subject of the formula, which means the angle between the two vectors is going to be cosine inverse of a dot b over mod a mod b. So as usual, we're going to look at a practice question to solidify these two concepts that we are learning today. So this is the practice question we'll be looking at today. Take some time, pause the video, give it a try yourself, and we'll go through the solutions together. Welcome back. So over here, I've written down the column vector form of OA and OB, and part A says to find the value of P, P is the K element of vector OB, for the case where OA and OB are perpendicular. As you know from the previous video, we can use dot product to check for perpendicularity. So if OA and OB were to be perpendicular, that means that OA dot OB is equal to a zero. So, and then taking the products of each of the elements, and I'm going to make P the subject of the formula, and therefore P is equal to negative two. That's the answer for part A. Welcome back to part B. In part B, we have to find the angle AOB. So angle AOB is the angle between the vectors OA and OB. And then uh, for the case of P equals to 6. So first of all, I'm going to let angle AOB be theta. That would be a lot easier for me to write my working. It's OA dot OB. So I'm going to make cosine theta the subject of the formula. Great. And now I just need to do cosine inverse on both sides. Then the next step would be to put in the numbers OA, OB, mod OA and mod OB. Perhaps it would be a good idea to work out what is mod OA and mod OB at the site in our planning space over here. Which is equal to 3. Which is equal to 7. So the dot product is going to be 6 minus 2 plus 12. So that's 16 over 21. And if you do this, this will be around 40 degrees if you run it to the nearest degree. And that is the answer for part B. Welcome back to part C. Now in part C, P is equals to 5. And we have to find the position vector of M, where M is uh, in between AB and the ratio of 1 is to 2. And over here, I think you can see a uh, ratio theorem going on. OM will be our arrow and OAB will be our bow. Remember, there's a cross multiplication going on. So 1 times of OB plus 2 times of OA divided by 3. Now, for OB, this is going to be 3, negative 2, 5. Remember, P is equal to 5. Plus 2 times of OA, that's just going to be 4, 2, 4, divided by 3. 7, 0, 9, divided by 3. So that's going to be 7 over 3, 0, 3. And that's the answer for part C. Welcome back to part D. In part D, we have to find uh, the value of P for which AB is going to be square root 11 units. So first of all, I can find what is AB. AB is going to be AO plus OB. Remember resultant vectors. So AO is the opposite of OA. Remember that we are not given a value of P in this question. And this will work out to be 1, negative 3, P minus 2. So now I have to find the magnitude of AB. 
this is going to be equals to now at the same time I'm being told that AB has a magnitude of square root 11 so this is equal to square root 11 and I can compare what's inside the square root sign so 11 must be equals to this and in the next step and we can factorize this which tells me p is equals to 3 or p is equals to 1 so these are the two values for which the length of AB will be square root of 11 and that's the answer for part D so I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you in the next one where we'll talk about using the dot product to find something called the length of projection. So until then, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.